TV23 recently had the pleasure of talking with DOT's Dan McDuff about resurfacing projects going on around the county. Here's Robert with more. Thanks, Tiffany. You know, as a Cobb County resident, we always see our roads. We're always traveling around the county. Well, we've got a guy who's an expert with us on set now, Deputy Director Dan McDuff from Cobb DOT. Dan, you guys are involved in so many things, but I understand you want to talk a little about resurfacing. Tell me about resurfacing. How do you guys pay for it? You know, that's one of the biggest components of preserving the infrastructure we have on our county system. And we have so many infrastructure pieces to preserve, sidewalks, striping, signage, the uh, signal systems we have. Mm -hmm. But roads are the biggest piece that we have to uh, continually upgrade and improve to make sure it's in good condition. Well, you know, as a, as a longtime Cobb County resident, I've seen the county grow a lot since 1968. Um, tell me, uh, how, how many roads do we have? How many miles are you guys responsible for? And, and, and do you guys have to do all that work yourselves? That's right. Right now, we have 2,400 miles of roads that we're responsible for maintaining. So we're constantly evaluating the condition of the roads. We drive each road annually and make sure that it's in good shape. And we rate it to determine when it needs to be re repaved. If we resurface too often, it's, it's a waste of money and a waste of that uh, current pavement. If we do it too late, it may cost a lot more money to repair. Yeah, I guess that's kind of tricky, especially here. I, I've noticed some <clears throat> roads up near where I live up in Kennesaw uh, where you know, they get some cracks and then the winter rolls around, the water gets in there, and all of a sudden uh, little cracks become pot, you know, big cracks mm -hmm. which become potholes. How do you guys, how do you combat that? You know, and that's exactly right. The freeze-thaw cycles during the winter is really what tears up our pavement. When that first top coat gets infiltrated with water, that, that starts tearing apart our pavement. So, you know, that's unfortunate. We have potholes, and there's some, some roads who haven't been paved for that long. That's just going to happen. So it's important that uh, the citizens call us the DOT, 770-528-1600, and let us know about those kind of things, and we can quickly get out there. We're very responsive. Usually within a couple of days, mm -hmm. we'll get that pothole repaired. A couple of days. I'll tell you what, there's a few times I've heard the calls going out and the guys are getting out there the same day and getting them fixed. Oh, which is, oh absolutely. That is our goal. Yeah, they That's, do a super job. That. Well, let me you. ask you this. Um, you know, we're under a 1% sales tax program right now, special local option sales taxes. So there's some money coming in to DOT and parks and public safety to mm -hmm. pay for stuff. Is that the kind of money you use for resurfacing? That is our, right now, it's our entire source of revenue for resurfacing. The only exception is we get about $3 million a year from uh, GDOT as okay. part of our uh, gas tax dollars. So, but between the 2011 SPLOST and the funding we're getting from GDOT the next five years, we will have almost $100 million of money towards resurfacing. And that's critical. We need every dollar of that to, to stretch the roads as far as we can. That keeps us, our head just above water. You know, when I think of resurfacing, does that mean, are you coming in, let's say, uh, in my neighborhood, I've got a street that's been down for, you know, 10 years, and y'all just can come and throw a couple inches of asphalt back on top of that, or what's the that's, process? That's a pretty, uh, it's a good process. We've wor worked it out over time, and, ha and, and the biggest part is we maintain access throughout the whole thing for the citizens, because you can't close a neighborhood road down for, <laughs> yeah. for a, a day or two. So what we do is we, uh, we'll put a sign three to five days ahead of time saying, Please turn off your sprinklers, pretty move, move any cars out of mm -hmm. the street. Um, a couple days later, we'll come back and we'll do what's called milling. So we'll take just the first top surface of the asphalt off, the old stuff. And it also makes it so the final surface right at the curb line is perfect when we're done. We say perfect, it's like, it's it, like flush or even it there? It matches perfectly with the gutter, okay. exactly. So that'll be the first step. The second thing we'll do is we'll come in there and fix any bad areas where there are existing potholes or the, the surface really needs some extra treatment mm -hmm. and a little deeper, we'll fix those. Then we'll come back and we'll resurface the entire road with about an inch and a quarter of asphalt. And I tell you, it's the number one thing we can do to revitalize an old subdivision. It really makes a difference in the final appearance. We come back after that, we fix the water valves and sewers, raise them to grade, and, and after that we send a street sweeper and we move on to the next subdivision. So how, how often would something like this occur? And I realize you say that you all uh, mm -hmm. grade the roads or rate the roads and the conditions. Uh, let's say you take a neighborhood in uh, East Cobb was built in 1970. Mm -hmm. uh, they've probably been resurfaced a couple times already, haven't That's they? That's true. It, you know, it really depends on the use of the road mm -hmm. and the type of traffic on the roadway and the soil conditions under the roadway and the condition when it was originally laid down. But, you know, we can get subdivisions to go 20 years or more. That's not quite the same on arterials where they have the heavy use that we do. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can go 15 to 20 years with the subdivision. Now, you know what I did? I pointed out East Cobb. And I said, how much and how long? 
Now, do you guys uh, break the resurfacing money up? Are the projects the same in districts or around mm -hmm. the county? How, how do you decide who and where and mm -hmm. how to spend that money? Well, as I say, we go around once a year and we rate the roads. And uh, we develop a prioritization of roads based on we use software that determines how long we can stretch it, projects when we have to exactly the time when we should resurface to make it the most useful. So it's, it's really not looked at between districts. It's looked at what is the priority countywide. Yeah, based on road condition. Yes, okay. yes sir. And now can you re resurface uh, year-round, or is that something only can do in the warm months? Right. Uh, resurfacing, it has to be really 55 degrees or more when okay. we resurface most of the day. So pretty much the winter months, we have three months that, that, that we really aren't resurfacing. But besides that, year-round, nine months, we're working hard. Excellent. Excellent. Um, let me tell you about the amounts. Uh, sure. This... Uh, October of 2011 to October 2012, we delivered $29.6 million of contracts for resurfacing. Wow. This year already in 2013, we've uh, delivered $12.5 million, and we'll, we have more contracts on the way. So when you say you've delivered these contracts, this means it's not Cobb DOT men and women out there doing this work, but you're actually putting businesses to work in the streets and the neighborhoods? Absolutely. We're sending out bids, contractors, getting the best price the county can get for these projects. So... Uh, that's what we do. Stretching those resurfacing dollars as far as you can. Yes, sir. That's great. Well, Dan, thanks for everything you do over at DOT. Thank you, sir. And Tiffany, we're right back to you. Thanks, Robert. Well, that wraps up this edition of Spotlight on Cobb. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.